Hey there, nerdpreneurs. Welcome back to Market Like a Nerd. And get ready to geek out with me because today I'm joined by Phil Singleton. Whoop, whoop. Hey, Phil. Welcome to Nerdpreneur uh, Nation. Tangled up in my own cord. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> All right. We are super stoked to have you. Now, for everyone who is listening, today we're going to be talking about how Phil here used a case study to sell out before the end of his webinar. So first, let me tell you a little bit more about Phil, and then we'll talk about his tips for how to leverage the power of webinars and case studies to really rock out your business income. Phil Singleton is a web designer, an SEO expert, <laughs> total nerd, and an award-winning author. <laughs> Since 2005, Phil has owned and operated a digital agency based in Kansas City. In 2016, Phil and John, how do you say his last name? Just like pants, but with a J. <laughs> Jantz. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> of duct tape marketing. See, I know that part. <laughs> Co-wrote SEO for growth, which if you're watching the video, you can see right behind him. The ultimate guide for marketers, web designers, and entrepreneurs. SEO for growth is an Amazon bestseller and has been... Uh, <laughs> and has been listed as a top marketing book by Mashable, Oracle, and the Huffington Post. It's also been featured on MSNBC, Entrepreneur, and Search Engine Journal, and on many other industry websites. Whoop, whoop. Phil and John are currently entering the next phase of their partnership by offering a training and SEO certification program ooh, to marketers and website designers and creating an additional network of certified SEO consultants. Yep, you're a nerd. It's official. All right. <laughs> So awesome. <laughs> uh, love your website. Love the podcast. Love the energy. Yay. Thank, thank you. <laughs> now, guys, that's the overview of his story and biography, but I want you to get to know the real Phil. So before we dive into the meat of today's episode, let's have some fun. Phil, you ready? Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> I am a marketing nerd. I'm actually a magical marketing nerd. I got my Gryffindor shirt on. From oh, you can see. <laughs> my Gosh, I like you so much Just more. Just for now. you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a client, Jen Levitz, who we rebranded her because I do branding, and we rebranded her into um, a Harry Potter esque sort of theme. So she's got like magic wands in her photos, and she's like casting spells, and then you know money is coming out of the pot. It's like really, really cool. <laughs> I love it. So we are. I love your background too. Mine's just got the. Nice beige wall with the standard office picture, but I'm gonna I'm gonna amp that up pretty soon here. So yeah, sounds good. But I did bring the shirt, so All thanks right. for that. I like it. I like it. So I guess I don't need to ask you who your favorite Harry Potter house is. Well, no, you don't have to ask. Yeah. No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Would you rather coach the Kansas City Royals or coach a team of aliens from Neptune? Oh man, I'm gonna have to go with the Royals just only because it's been so long and they brought us home the trophy a couple of years ago. So, but before then, it would have been aliens. <laughs> Love it. I've I've converted. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah, a true bandwagon fan. <laughs> Got to give it to the Royals. Uh, well, not to mention John, my the co-author of the book is like one of the biggest Royals fans out there. So he'd disown me if I didn't say the Royals. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Got to keep the partnership solid, right? <laughs> Would you rather do a webinar every single day or never be allowed to do another webinar ever again? Oh, man. Oh, I'd, I'd have to go with the webinar every day. Uh. I'd have I couldn't give it up. If you ask me after maybe the first year of doing it every day, then I'd probably have a different different uh, opinion on that. But I'd have to go for the webinar now. Yeah, you must really like them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, good. That means that we're learning from a webinaraholic. So <laughs> that's a good thing for us. One way to look at it. Would you prefer to live in Taiwan again for 10 more years or live on a spaceship for the rest of your life? Spaceship. Yeah. yeah. I'm always going for the new place, the new, new exotic place, and haven't done the spaceship yet. Yeah. <laughs> that I remember, so. That's what I would pick. Like, ex Except I watched that one movie recently. Um with J-Law, Jennifer Lawrence, and who was the other guy? Oh, where they got shot off and went to sleep. Um, yeah, what was the, the um, is, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy guy um, with Jennifer Lawrence, and, like, the whole ship just, like, gets destroyed, and, like, they almost, the ship almost um, fails while everyone is mid-space, and... <laughs> 
Don't spoil it. I haven't seen that one yet. So. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> but mean, that, that uh, turned it, that turned you off of the space uh, the space travel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> it was a good movie though. I recommend it. And finally, most importantly, would you rather get ranked number one on a Google search or be ranked number one by your twin boys? Have to go with that. Twin boys. Have to go with the twin boys. Oh. That's a tough one because when you were saying it, I was like, nothing's gonna beat Google, and then you did it. So. <laughs> Oh, you got to go with the kids. You're being a suck up daddy. Come on. Come on. (laughs) They're going to see this too. So I got to be, you know, Austin and Eli, you heard it here first. (laughs) I feel like I could totally handle not being my kid's favorite. Like (laughs) I'm okay with that. (laughs) All right. That was fun. Thank you so much, Phil. (laughs) You're a good sport. Let's get down to business though. Uh, you told me you were going to share with us today behind the scenes of your case study and how you leveraged a case study actually to sell out before the end of your webinar so that we can learn how to do this in our business too. So let's dive in. Can you get a little OCD with us? Break it down into your three to five main steps or tips that you have for us today. Well, I mean, I guess everybody's approach to case studies is a little bit different. Um, and I think most people look at them in terms of I did, I've done this work and trying to cherry pick maybe something successful from the past. Yeah. And saying, hey, this worked out this way as a good example or a bad example, and then using that as a case study to try and promote or sell or educate somebody. Um, when I look at case studies, though, I'm actually trying to maybe engineer them for the future. And that's kind of how what we did for uh, the one that hmm. I think was successful and the one I'm going to give an example of is we, I was thinking, hey, I want to create prototype um, case studies to use to sell people. So let's work on achieving those goals first for the end purpose of using them to demonstrate to folks how this process or this system might work. So you and, basically, you say, um, you know, like making a million dollars in 30 days would be a really great case study. That, so that's the goal that I want to have. So let's make it happen so I can use it in my marketing. Exactly. Oh. And I can explain in the example that I have, I can tell you exactly how that works. Because I guess if you don't achieve the goal, then you can either not do it as planned or maybe try and craft um, as, as an example of how not to do something or how to improve something. But in this case, we did it. It actually worked. Then we leveraged into a, leven- a webinar and we basically oversubscribed before the, the webinar was over. So it was wild, you know, it was successful from that standpoint. But that's kind of how I look at anything that we do. If I'm going to go have a new customer or do a new podcast interview or meet with somebody, I'm always kind of looking at that person as somebody who might be able to vouch for me later. Yeah. Bring your A game. Think of them as a potential review for you for something. Um, and then do your best to try and make that you know goal happen. So we did the same thing with with the SEO for growth um, project that we did, and we turned that into a case study, and it it, it worked um, worked out with you know basically with flying colors. I love that. Now you might be you might answer this in your tips, and if so, that's fine. You just tell me to be quiet. Um, but I'm curious when you decide that this is a goal you want to accomplish because you want to use this as a case study, is that something that you and your you know your internal team knows but you you keep it kind of hush hush to the public or do you do you make a public declaration hey we're going to try and reach this goal and then we'll share our journey with you along the way and then when we're done we'll we'll share the case study um in this initial case i did i not no we didn't share it to the public and say hey let's take this thing in the ground and say watch us we're gonna watch us get there type of a thing yeah um that's a little bit risky. And I guess if you did enough of those, you'd actually get one and make it look like you were a superstar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in this case, we just kind of outlined, here's the plan that we have. And here's the idea. Shared it with a couple people that we thought might be good. Um, we might want to participate in the case in the case study that we were going after. Yeah. And then just let those folks know how it's going along. And then also we kind of let a few people come in that we fight, thought might be good um, folks that would talk about the the success and maybe spread the word out once they kind of saw some of the the, the results come in later on. So we kind of seeded it a little bit. Oh, okay. you're remind. I totally forgot that I did this once before, but I, you just reminded me there was, and cause you were saying that's a little risky and I was like, Hmm, I wonder if I Sounds would do familiar. it. <laughs> yeah. So I actually, I did this once where I was doing a launch and I was like, I'm going to make this a million dollar launch and here's my plan. And I kind of broke down my plan for people and then it ended up being a six hundred thousand dollar launch, not a million, which is still not bad. Ooh, just, yeah, but still, what a great failure! <laughs> <laughs> Wish we could all fail like that. <laughs> which is still not bad. It's awesome. But um, but I, I but I I do remember being like, oh, I guess I shouldn't reuse this video, <laughs> like the video where I was talking about my plan, because I also like 
the plan that I went into it with to get to the million dollars, I completely ditched and I got the 600,000 in a completely different way. So at the end of all of it, I was like, oh crap, I guess I should just like, like, I'm not going to use this video anymore. <laughs> we'll pretend that that's never still, happened. Though, that's, that's a great idea because you could still make a video, make the claim, <laughs> plan, it, plan it somewhere, plan it somewhere without promoting it. Yeah. And then once you, cause if I would have had that a year ago and say, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. It would make it really cool to be like, look oh. what I said a year ago and we did it. And yeah. then if it, and if it didn't work out, then you could just kind of snuff just that one or delete it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, I like this. Right. We're brainstorming here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> nice. All right. So I interrupted your train of thought. You 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 take us back. What 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 was your first tip or what's what's the first thing that you did in the case study? <laughs> well, I mean, it was really more of kind of a project based. Um, um, it was a project we were going after, and the idea was that we would John and I, John Jance and I would write a book and the purpose of it for writing the book, I think for anybody writing any book these days really isn't about the, the book. Isn't really the, the finish line. The book's yeah. like the launching pad, right? You don't, you don't want to just have a book to pass out. You're definitely not going to get rich from just the book royalties type of thing. So it has to be about more than just writing a book. Right. And in our case, the, and there was a lot of goals that we had in, in writing it, but the main goal of writing the book really was to one, create a website that we could leverage the book and all the book activity into an authority website in our niche, meaning we could get a lot of people to come to it traffic wise, get a lot of backlinks from high authority sites, start to maybe get some search engine ranking so people could find it, and then leverage the people that gave us endorsements and said nice things about it as a way to build credibility into the system that we're trying to do. That was one thing, to build this kind of mothership of a parent site, that's seoforgrowth.com, mm -hmm. um, to do that, and we accomplished that, but the real end goal was to try and create a s network of child sites on top of the main SEO for growth site. Mm. And what I, what we did is we built SEO for growth on a WordPress multi-site platform, which enables us to have one install of WordPress and then we can have child sites on top of it. Yeah. And what we did is we, we said, you know what we want to do? We want to try and build up um, two Metro sites. We're going to do one in St. Louis and one in Atlanta. And it's going to be St. Louis.SEO for growth and Atlanta.SEO for growth. And what we're going to do is we're going to leverage all the things that we're doing for the, from the book at the national level, create these sites at the metro level, and we're going to get these um, child sites to rank so that the people that are running them can all of a sudden start to generate leads and sales in their market. So we kind of leverage the national platform and try and, and leverage that into the local markets. And what ended up happening is if you type up St. Louis SEO right now, our child site comes up number one in a period of less than a year. Our Atlanta comes up number two. We just launched that three or four months ago. Um, so what we did is once we, we had those two cities, we were like, ooh, we got a great case. right?" And that was, what we, that was the goal was we set these things up a while ago. We launched them. They succeeded. Time for the webinar. Mm. Webinar comes on. We invite some people that kind of knew what we were doing and accelerated some interest. And we started talking about it. And during the webinar, we start to type up the search results and people are like, Wow, uh, you're, you're basically ranking in big cities for words that are the, the most competitive words that are out there, right? SEO something is going to be the most competitive because oh, it's yeah. a bunch of SEO people competing for it, right? Of course. In that city, it pops up all of a sudden. Phone starts ringing. I want, and the people are emailing us all during it. We said we want ten sites. We ended up getting twelve. We shut it off. Now we've probably got thirty or forty different people that want to participate, but we we can't launch that many cities at once, so we stopped it. So yeah, it's kind of giving you a big picture so there, but it all come came back to just you know writing a book and use leveraging it into the SEO and then doing that in a way to pull some people and now you've got a certification program and these lead generation sites that we're really trying to expand out to the rest of the country so let me make sure I understand this correctly so you you created the book and the the this website and these mini sites as a way to get traffic into get traffic and backlinks into these websites so that you would rank higher on Google so that you could get more traffic into the sites to get people into your offers? What were the offers that you're selling on the websites? Well, the websites really is the book. Okay, so the main book website has got the book and then it's got a certification program and it also has, we call the agency partner plan, which mm -hmm. is the certification is people that want to take a course and maybe learn more that's in the book, but the agency partners are people that actually want to set up the site sites and, and, and um, so that's, what's up in there the the main part of the system though is to really try and develop these actual you know physical web sites with actual people in them in the cities 
And that's that's really what the main goal of the whole project was, really, because we weren't I'm not looking to sell courses. I'm not looking to sell more books. I'm actually looking to try and leverage what we've done here in Kansas City. I have an agency called Kansas City Web Design. We rank really well. Our phone rings off the hook. But it's not when you run an agency like this and especially when you're focused locally, it's hard to scale that. Yeah. But when you can build up a system and then all of a sudden help other people to develop the same thing and scale it out on a network, all of a sudden you can kind of scale your knowledge out a little bit in a way that helps somebody else, but also helps you maybe grow your business that way. And that was the whole purpose behind the whole book. So the, the interesting thing about a book, though, is it makes you it's a launchable thing that creates us a lot of activity and content stuff around it. Right. Press releases we have in the book that we I mean, again, this whole thing was engineered to get people to market it for us. So we've got like 50 50 top um, influencers um, endorsed it, which sounds cool because it's like, oh, great, 50, 50 people that we've all known and heard of have said great things about it. That's not the key point. The key point is when we went out to launch it, they helped us promote it because they were part of it, right? right. In each chapter, 16 chapters, we named a cert, an expert for that chapter. That person was stoked to be in there when the book went out. So the whole book is like seeded with all this kind of stuff in there that's, that's basically engineered to help people drive traffic to the website, promote it in their social media, help us generate more sales, but really to increase the trust and authority in the website so it ranks and it pulls people in that are interested in in becoming certified consultants that will then sell. The main, here's the end of your question was th th what their main goal is when these people type in St. Louis SEO, we're trying to help that consultant be able to sell digital marketing services in that city. Yeah. So now, we, now they're behind a trusted brand that's got people like, you know, Brian Halligan from Trust, uh, from uh, HubSpot and those guys that have said great things about him, you know, instantly kind of a digital uh, marketing thing in a box type of deal. That was the main goal, right? But it really, the reason it's taken off right now for us, case study. Totally like a fully manufactured case study where he said, I'm going to do these two cities. We're going to succeed on it. And based on the success of these two cities, we're going to open it up to other people. And that's how this business is going to succeed. Mm. And it was totally based on, on this kind of a, um, engineered case study right from the from the ground up basically yeah i love this so i what i want to do is i want to highlight a couple of the things that you said that i that i feel are really important for our listeners to take away from this i know that the main purpose of this is really um number one you have to decide what your end goal is what that case study is that you want to create and then go out and create it um i get that that's kind of like the main point here but there are some other really great nuggets that you've said already that they're uh, it, it's a little subtle so i want to point them out um the first thing is you keep using this word authority website and um, that really sticks out to me because there's a lot of different website designers out there and what I find most of them do is they either are really good at building uh, it like they're very very technical or they're just really good at making things look pretty <laughs> you know like they're good graphic designers it's very difficult to find someone who has the technical ability the design ability and also the marketing capability. So it sounds like you're kind of this great trifecta with your website design. Um, and, and I'm a really big believer that it's not enough to just have a website that looks good or even just a website that looks good and converts. You want a website that makes your sales seamless, that makes your sales easy because people see it as an honor to work with you because people see you as an authority and an influencer. Um, I've gone through... God, <laughs> so many websites, <laughs> so many. And <laughs> um, the difference between my previous websites and this website that I have now with Market Like a Nerd, like you mentioned in the beginning that you love my website, that happens all the time because I finally went into the design of this website saying, I don't just want it to look good. I don't just want it to convert. I want it to establish me as an authority. So, yes, great, great point. Man, you, I love you're, this. You're giving me goosebumps. I mean, that's exactly <laughs> what it's website to design today is um, your website's a marketing platform. It's not a site on the web. That's the way you know, people still look it's at not it a as a digital brochure. Card. <laughs> Exactly. But that's still how the vast majority of people still think about it. But it's all about establishing trust and authority and basically showing people why, why you're the choice, you're the authority, not basically saying all the things you can do. And here's our products and services. It's like, here's what I do. Here's me. Here's what other people have said about me. All of a sudden you, you become the natural choice because you've established yourself 
as an authority in the niche that you're in. So, I mean, that was just really, I mean, it was great the way you explained it. And I love it when I hear that type of stuff because you probably hear the same thing that we do all the time. We're, we're trying to flip people around to thinking like, it's not an expense, it's an investment. You gotta think of this as a revenue generating asset and something where it should be the referral source of everything that you're doing, not just little this little thing you stick away and, and hope that it you know does something for you. Um, like like your 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 print brochure, so love it. Yeah, and then the other point that I wanted to highlight here is you you mentioned a couple times getting other people to promote you when you um, so you decided you wanted to rank for those words and you wanted to leverage this book to get the traffic in so that you could rank for those words, and how you you integrated how many experts was it was it fifty. I think we've got at least 50 endorsements in here and okay. in the front of the book, sure. So you got 50 endorsements from 50 other influencers and experts in your niche integrated into this book. And then when you're launching this book, you've got all of these other people who are promoting it as well. And if they're writing blogs and they're linking out to it, look, there you go. There's another little backlink. If they're going straight to the, um, if they're promoting straight to your, your book page, you've got some more traffic coming to your book page that you didn't even have to lift a finger for. You know, I mean, yeah, you have to, you had to integrate them into the book, but they're the ones promoting it. And this is such an undervalued strategy. I feel like a lot of people in our niche, they, you know, they really rely on either Facebook ads or just manually going out and posting on social media. And there are other forms of traffic that are not um, heavy in terms of the workload. And that's affiliate traffic. When you leverage other people's traffic to send to your offers, it's so, so valuable and so much more effortless. I, I love it. I mean, you're basically, <laughs> I can't say it any better than you just did. So, um, it's exactly true. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it works. I mean, it works so well because anytime that you, when you say you're awesome, nobody wants to hear it. When other people <laughs> say you're great, it's worth a thousand times more. You know oh, what I mean? so, and, and this ties into what you're saying about being an authority. You know, you want to look like an authority, but it's not enough to say, Hey, I'm an authority and have this like great website. You have to have other people say it too. And there's all sorts of ways to leverage it. When you do an ebook or a podcast, for example, or uh, you know, a physical book, I mean, it just gives you access. When you go in and say, hey, when you ask for an endorsement or say, I want to include you as an expert in my book, you're reinforcing their authority. They're happy to give it to you. Whereas if you were to ask them to say, hey, I've got this great book. Will you promote it in my email? They're going to be like, what? Are you nuts? Or I'll cost you this much money. But maybe you get the same benefit by saying, hey, you're an authority. Can we give you – get us to give you a, a blurb in the book? They're more than happy to do that. And now since they're part of the book, they're happy to promote it when it comes out. So that was a big part of it, getting it out there, getting the people's faces on it, drawing other people in. It's not the main thing. But when you have these little pieces of like anchor content that I call it and you're able to get like a – cascade of win-wins. I mean, there wasn't just one thing. And we built, I basically took this and I looked at other books. And I was like, how many things can we squeeze out? How much value can we squeeze out of it, right? And it's like, you get book, you get book sales, you got the ultimate business card to pass out to somebody. You get other people participating on it. We can build a website and get it. I think a lot of people that do any types of thing, especially when it comes to book, because they don't think of the book as a way to draw people into a new website asset. Mm -hmm. They either just go post it up on Amazon yeah. Um, or they might just include it on their web. They should at least include it on their website, I believe. But if you can make your own website for a book launch, I mean, it's awesome because all the press worthy things that you do out of, you can actually build a new asset that can drive its, its new traffic and you can leverage that um, into other things. And that's this more value that you're bringing to yourself. So, yeah, absolutely. So you decided that this is what you wanted to use, that you, the case study you wanted to create. You went out and you just described exactly how you accomplished the case study. Then you decided to turn this case study into a web. Webinar. So walk us through that part. That had, to me, it's like one of these things where you see we spent a, a lot of time and effort just to, to me to get to this one 30 minute uh, webinar that we did. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty interesting to think about how all of the value um, that came in in terms of signing people up happened in almost what was kind of the easiest part of it. Yeah. Right. It was the things leading up to it, like writing the book, getting it up there, getting all the end endorsements and that setting up the, the actual separate websites and the content and drawing people in. Once we had all it together and then had the, the record to show for it, you know, setting the, the, the webinar up was pretty easy. Now, in this case, I was really lucky because John Jantz, I mean, he wrote Duct Tape Marketing and three or four other um, very famous books. He's a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. So me being able to team up with him. Um, that was really lucky of me. And that's a whole nother story in and of itself. Um, because he is an, an influencer. I'm a wannabe influencer, right? So I'm kind of trying <laughs> to ride, 
And that, that's a path we can all take, right? Because if you find somebody, you can impress them and show them your knowledge. Sometimes they'll open up doors for you. We had a similar you know journey. I started out with um, uh, my business part, my ex business partner, Mara Glazer from Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle. And she was the influencer and I was the wannabe influencer and I was kind of like in her shadows and then we parted ways and now I'm the influencer. So, <laughs> so, that, so that, that really helps. And obviously without John, we don't, we're, he's a handshake away from a lot of these guys that wrote in the book. So that obviously really helped. It also, he's also has his own network of 120 certified duct tape consultants and that's who we tapped in first, right? Went into some of those guys, opened it up. They were already a little bit familiar. So we're part of this first case study thing is also going to a group that kind of knows who you've seen. Mm -hmm. And again, we've also kind of seeded them a little bit with some of the success. But then we didn't we didn't totally release the curtains until the webinar so that we like really, once you type, like especially in SEO, once you kind of show people what happened, pull back the curtains and say, hey, go ahead and physically type this. And they see it themselves. They're all of a sudden like, holy cow. Then they also don't want, and we say, hey, there's only going to be, 10 spots for this, we started to create scarcity right away. Yeah. Signups happened on the spot. That it, was enough. But, but you mentioned, you asked about like, how the, the, to me, the webinar piece was the easiest piece. It was literally like, John had all the stuff set up and he's got all the, the subscriptions. He, we had an email thing to blast out to. We did it. We had the sign up. So that was like of the whole process. That was probably the easiest thing to do. It was just a matter of getting the right timing and the right content together. Well, so I guess the lesson there is if you do enough prep work, setting yourself up so that you look like an influencer, you've got an audience who sees you as an influencer, and you've got proof that you can walk your talk, the sales from there become very, very seamless. You, and uh, I, I want to go back to um, what you were talking about, how cool it is that you, uh, when you were on the webinar, you were like, hey, go type this in Google. It'll be the first one there, and it actually is the first result there on Google, and people see that, and they're like, wow, you're reminding me of this uh, episode we had once. I don't remember the episode number, but it was with Dan Henry, and he was talking about how on his webinar, he literally had people... He showed the screen as people were joining the program and you could see like all of the money coming in, all of the sales coming oh, yeah. in That's awesome. and it created a lot of scarcity. So things like that, that make people's jaw drop and be like, wow, this person really knows their stuff. That really makes you stand out because there's so much BS. There's so much fluff in this industry. So many people who say that they, you know, right. you know, say one thing and then when you buy from them, you get a whole nother the way that you did it is you showed people that you know your stuff by giving them proof that they could believe in because they could see it. And then exactly. And the other part of it that's still in process is this has kind of been our strategy from the beginning is we're going to get two and we got the two sign up another 10. Once a, you know, one, one, one good SEO case study is not really a case study because that can be luck. Two is, is more than luck. Yeah. Um, if we get 12 now, that's the next goal, 12 or maybe 15, a couple of people have kind of dribbled in and asked for favors, but no more. I promise. <laughs> um, the, um, if we can go out to the rest of the broader market with 15 ranking cities, I mean, we're going to have something even bigger than that. Oh, and again, yeah. it's to me, it's a case study model because I'm doing the same thing. Now, in this case, we're going to, we're signing up, you know, another, um, 10 to 12 and we have, we have already, um, I don't even need all 12 of them to do well. If I get another eight or seven to rank really well, I'm still going to be able to go out to the market and say, now I have 10 plus the original two. Yeah. And we're going to be able to sign up many cities across the country. And it's, but it's the same, it's the same strategy. I'm not, we didn't go all in. If, and it would have been too much work, I think, to do 10 case studies. It would have been really impressive. But kind of bootstrapping it in steps like this, I think, is another important part. So this is kind of, Step two of the process is in process right now. Yeah. Um, but we know we have the recipe because we've done it twice, and uh, we know we're going to get several more cities to rank, and we know we're going to do another bigger you know, webinar later this year. So. Well, I could totally see if you if you did ten of the twelve, and even if you didn't get all twelve, you could do something like um, eighty four percent of the. Uh, rankings that you tried, you actually succeeded in within this period of time. I know I do something like that with my cash injections. I said um, like 94% of the people who went through my last round of cash injections made anywhere between 5,000 and 4,000 within the first three weeks. And that, you know, proof. things like that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Proof that stands out that makes you look like an authority so that so that the sales are really seamless. Exactly. Awesome. So don't just say you do what you do. Go ahead and show it. <laughs> Prove it. That is the key lesson here, guys. So 
Phil, thank you for being here and sharing this with us and really thank reinforcing you. the importance of this message. <laughs> My pleasure, and thank you so much. This was the most fun podcast I've ever been on, so yeah. appreciate it. You rock, you rock. <laughs> you do you. rock. Yes, you do. <laughs> Now, Phil, for the nerdpreneurs who are listening and want to get an A plus for effort and are going to take that extra step to look you up, can you make it easier on them? Where can they find you online or what can they type into Google? <laughs> well, look, my home base is kcwebdesigner.com. Again, that's just kind of a small boutique agency here in Kansas City, but it's my first baby in terms of on the internet type of thing. So, And it's really what we based a lot of this kind of book stuff on. Um, SEO for growth, I'd love for big people to go check that out. Of course, if you're on Amazon Prime, you get the book for free. Come back to the website. We've got a nice little um, three three ebook bundle. One from from Yoast to Voc at Yoast WP. If you know if you guys are familiar with with the Yoast um, um, SEO plugin, yeah. Larry Kim from AdWords gave us a nice a great AdWords um, ebook. And then we've got one on local SEO. So you get this free book from Kindle from from Amazon. Come back to the website. We're going to give you three more um, ebooks to download right there. So that's probably our best gift or our best offer at the moment. We're going to keep giving that away until those guys say you can't do that anymore. <laughs> Um, and then do, if you're into SEO, man, check out like St. Louis.SEO for growth or Atlanta.SEO for growth and see kind of how we did it. Cause I think this WordPress multi-site network of trying to attack the country city by city is kind of a cool underused thing that most people don't think of to use. They try and go after the oh. big traffic overall instead of trying to penetrate, you know, each city. Cause you can win nationally by going, you know, attacking each little individual market. So, oh yeah, no, actually a lot of people don't know this, but my, um, my start was actually with working with an SEO and website development company like years and years and years ago on the East coast. You nerd. I knew there was I Inner no. nerd, even a deeper nerd. You were saying SEO geek. Yeah, you're one of us. I knew it. I could, I just knew it. <laughs> and they did the they did the same sort of thing. They um they were ranking for like Maryland website designer, but then they had um in, in like their footer they kept uh, links to these mini sites that they had that were for the different cities in the area in Maryland. So they were ranking for all these different cities uh, as a website designer. Right. So like right. um. Uh, I haven't been there in a long time. I don't even remember all the cities, but but like it was like Baltimore, Maryland website designer, or like Baltimore, Baltimore web, website designer, or Carroll County website designer, that type of thing. And they were ranking for those little, awesome. those little mini words using a similar strategy as you. So it, and you're right, it's really, really underused. I haven't, besides them and you, I haven't heard of any other SEO expert talk about it. So that it's tells me you know it. your stuff. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, um, SEOforgrowth.com. Is that right, Phil? That's it. All right, beautiful. Well, head on over there, guys. Nerdpreneur Nation, there you have it. Our webinar case study superhero has swooped in to save the day. Head on over to right. SEOforgrowth.com. Woo! Thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you guys. Had for, a blast. Yeah. And thank you guys for listening. We hope you learned a lot. Can't wait to hear where these tips take you. And we'll catch you next time on Market Like a Nerd. Have a nerdtastic day, guys. Bye.